Welcome to Books and Things. Another week's gone by, and we're getting into spring, and the weather's gorgeous. Tonight's guest is Lisa Saunders. Now, some of you may know her as a host and producer of the Lisa Saunders Show that appears here on SEC TV on Wednesday nights. Yes, Wednesday nights. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, she's also a member of Kappa and has been one of my friends since uh, she moved into Mystic, which is quite a few years ago. Yeah, 2010 now. <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. Time does fly. Almost six years. Wow. And now you're going to meet Lisa Saunders as a children's author. Now, Lisa has written eight books? Yes. <laughs> wow, and uh, she does a whole ton of other stuff, but we're not gonna get into that. Today we're going to introduce her new children's book, which is called? Once Upon a Placemat, A Once Table a Setting placemat. Tale. And I read that, it's very good, welcome. Oh, thank you very Appreciate much. Appreciate you coming down the show. I read the book. And it wasn't too long, right? So it was an easy read. <laughs> yeah, it was in between. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it is a short book, but it's, but it's very interesting. And I myself, as I'm sure a lot of people, have trouble where to put the fork and which fork to use first. <laughs> and, uh, and for kids, this is great. And yeah, I, a... yeah, that's what I did it for because I. It's actually an expanded excerpt of another book I wrote, "Ride a Horse on an Elevator," oh, and yeah. so many yeah. people have gotten in touch with me. Gee, that little thing fairy tale you told in that book taught me how to set the table, or taught my child. So I thought, shoot, I really should make it a separate book and expand yeah. it because they have, you know, these are characters <coughs> that are alive and want people to know that the fork has needs. <laughs> <laughs> and the knife has worries. You well, know? that's true because you put it, put names on it, and the kids can realize. <laughs> now, if, every time I handle a fork, I'm going to be very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and think about the knife. Yeah. <laughs> and what he's I, thinking. It's dangerous. <laughs> I'm not playing with a spoon anymore. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Wow, he's really jealous. So, because they are married. So. Yeah, yeah, they're married, and and what the other fork and. I had the fork. He is married, but I don't really talk about his wife, oh. except at the very end, because okay. she's the dessert fork. And they don't really lay on the same napkin. No. Yeah, you know, no. if you're really being proper. Yeah. Um, but I do have them being married. Well, see, that's why I don't go to proper dinners, because I never know what to do. <laughs> you look at it and say, oh, no, no, what am I going to do now? <laughs> we had one Saturday night where the fork is laying up there. You got two forks on this side, and I'm going, first fork is the last one over. Right, you That's eat salad. inward, right. Um, the dessert fork, even though I have him married to Mrs. Fork, she does. She is on top of the plate, okay. facing toward your glass. Now, we also have a video to show, and yes. if I can get that video up, we can start with the uh, explaining. So I can I, introduce those characters Welcome to Once Upon a Placemat, a table-setting tale. I'm Lisa Saunders, the author, here to read you a few pages. If you own this book, you can color in all the black and white images, like this one. But if you borrowed the book from the library, you can ask a grown-up to download this free placemat from my website at authorlisasaunders.com and color it in any way you like. My friend colored in my book's images for this video. Do you have your crayons nearby? Okay, then let's get ready to find out what your tableware is really thinking and why they sit where they do on the placemat. Once upon a placemat in Grandma's house, not so far away, lived a plate, fork, knife, spoon, and cup. Can you see them peeking at you from behind the windows? The tableware had many things to say, but I couldn't hear them until the day Grandma told me a story. I loved to sit on Grandma's lap and listen to her stories. I also loved to sit in Grandma's wheelbarrow and be pushed around her farm while she weeded and told me about the plants and flowers. In fact, I like to sit and listen to stories all day long instead of helping with chores. But one day, Grandma wouldn't let me sit. Grandma said, Lisa, it's time for lunch. Please set the table. Grandma, I complained, I never remember where all the silverware goes. Can't I just sit in the kitchen and watch you set the table while you tell me a story? Grandma agreed to tell me a story as long as I helped. First, Grandma made me wash my hands. If you don't wash your hands, Grandma warned, naughty germs will try to sneak into your eyes, nose, and mouth to make you sick. Once my hands were clean, Grandma got out her placemats and began to tell a story. 
Grandma said, some of the utensils don't get along, so we must be very careful where we put them. We want them to be happy so they will all work together. To hear the rest of Grandma's story and learn why the fork wants his private napkin bed, why the knife is afraid the dish will run away with the spoon, and why the cup insists she and the others get a bath before being shared, ask your adults to get a copy of the book Once Upon a Placemat, a Table Setting Tale, from the library, bookstore, or Amazon. Tell your adults the book has recipes for the food served in the story, even for the cake. You can also tell them that I have a special section for adults on why no one should share their cups or utensils with each other, not even family members. This is important because when my younger daughter was growing in my belly, I got germs from someone else's saliva. Even though I didn't feel sick, my baby was born sick. I wrote this book so that we can have a fun way to share meals without sharing germs. If you would like more stories about Grandma and me, Read my children's novel, Ride a Horse, Not an Elevator. This chapter book includes recipes from Grandma's Kitchen, a study guide, and Cornell University's Horse and Human Nutrition Worksheets. My friend Suzanne Dukas Niermeyer colored in the illustrations done by Marianne Greiner for this video. If you would like more placemats for coloring, please have your adults visit my website at authorlisasaunders.com, click on Lisa's Books and Play, then on Once Upon a Placemat. If your adults would like to arrange an author visit or have any questions, they can write to me at lisasaunders42 at gmail.com. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I think it's, a, it's really a cute little story about the, the fork, the, the dish running away with a spoon. Yes. <laughs> and, I, and it's, you know, you bring up these, all these little tidbits from when you learned as a kid. I never really put that on the table as, as, as an example, but it, that's a cute idea to try it in there like that. Well, thank you. Because <laughs> that's the only way I can remember things, is to make up stories about them. Yeah. And it's funny because I had even some of my adult friends read it recently. Oh, now when I have people that care, I can actually set the table because I'll be thinking about them. And now when I'm loading the dishwasher, I really worry about putting them to certain ones together. So. Oh, no, not the knives together. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So. And you probably find them in the morning all bent. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Well, that's cool. Oh, and, and little things like that are things that you, you learned and remember for the rest of your life. When I was in high school, I think I was junior or senior, which I still don't even remember that, but I do remember the teacher saying how to spell words that have L-I or L-E after them. Keep lice in your head. So wait, so what does that do if you keep lice in your head? L-I-C-E. So it's always L I or C E. Oh, okay. Receive, R E C E I. Oh. So you keep lice in your head. It's, it's yeah, you know, I think lice, but that's. Right, these are, right. Reality is that is how we really remember yeah, something. Yeah. So I remember that. Well, I'm not even going to say how many years it's been, but things like that are catchy. Yes, and, and it's fun to have your memories because we just used some of your pictures for the new book I'm doing oh, with my co-authors. Right. Yes, yeah. for Images of Modern America, Mystic, that I'm doing with the uh, Fullers, Meredith mm -hmm. and Kent Fuller. So thank you for a picture uh, of you in your scout uniform. Oh, good. Yeah, <laughs> that was great. I, I, it was fun looking that stuff up. I think, because uh, after Mystic in the 50s, I love history anyway, mm -hmm. and it's uh, just every little morsel I can get, I love to jump in on. And we did give a plug for your book in our book. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so that people can, because we covered more the 60s to today, yeah. but you cover heavily the 50s, and actually I had to refer to your book so that I could know gas stations and just certain things that were very oh, helpful. Book. Yes, and I loved knowing that you put out that big fire in 1960. Well, with, not personally, but. <laughs> well, <laughs> you, had your, you had to put your clothes on over your pajamas yes yeah I was out there and it was cold god it was it was a blizzard right actually probably the only f first blizzard I probably ever went through now do you miss the movie theater because it was yeah the I theater was good I heard though uh -huh. that the toilets went right into the oh, they did. river it did <laughs> and it, you had the rat the water rats yep. going across the oh, stage oh god we've seen them run right across the stage <laughs> during a movie right yeah, during a movie and everybody's screaming <laughs> but they disappear but it was built over the river. Yeah. There was 
basically no ground under it, which is why they never built it up again because mm -hmm. there's nothing to build under. And they couldn't get another. See, the, the store next door hooked into the sewage, mm -hmm. and there wasn't enough room for the for the theater uh, to do it. Mm -hmm. So they couldn't rebuild it. But most of, I don't know how we got on this subject, but most of the town was flushed in the, in the Mystic River. That's, I'm glad things are different. Yes, you and me both. <laughs> and, I had, and I do have, um, like I said, you know that I write a lot of history, but it is fun. And I write mostly nonfiction, but it is fun to write fairy tales, which oh, is yeah. why writing children's book is kind of a relief to just get away from these heavy-duty facts that you have to double-check and double-check and just yeah. let my imagination yeah. run wild so I can tell a story that kids will enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> I have always wished I could write a kid's book, but I just can't seem to sit down and get one. Yeah, but you could, like when you wrote about your mother's apron and things like that. Yeah. I, there are ways that you could take some of your memories that you've yeah. written about and make them entertaining for children, because children always look at things and wonder about things the way they used to be. So I'm sure you could do it. <laughs> yeah, and, and in those in the years of children, they're informative. Those are the ones they want to learn so much. And if you don't teach them, then they'll never remember any of it. And it's not as hard to convince children to read because. They always love to read, and their parents yeah. love for them to read, so you don't have to, <laughs> to run around <laughs> remind everybody to read. Yeah. So that's what's kind of fun, too, is yeah. just have a ready audience that enjoys hearing. And parents love for this new fairy tale. They love knowing their child's going to learn that. On top of germ prevention, because I do mm. include that as well, is making sure people don't share their cups. Because so many people are guilty of... Oh, can I have a sip? And yeah. I cringe when I see that ah. because there are so many diseases that you don't, they're not bothering you, yeah. but if you give them to somebody else, if they're transferred through saliva, you know. Now, when we were kids, we drank from hoses. Well, hoses are probably okay, and as long as you're not putting your mouth on the hose where everybody else just puts their... That's the bottle around the room. <laughs> yeah, that's bad. Yeah. That's bad. That's why I have Miss Cup in the story, insisting yeah. that she gets a bath. <laughs> well, she should. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And other, other dishes, too, but mostly, mostly you see people sharing drinks. Oh, yeah. can I have a sip? And, I, and I, like I said, I do just cringe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the only t people I share drinks with is... My spouses, and, right. and I don't that, do that anymore either. Uh, <laughs> hey, are you looking for any, are, are, Do we need to fix you up with somebody, or do you have somebody special? Or is this too personal, and we're not supposed to talk about that now? No, and no. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I, I'm dating, but it's just uh, who knows. Okay, well, just you know. <laughs> well, it's good to know you. Like I said, you look great in this hat and your outfit. So well, thank you. I'm sure thank you're, you know, opening a lot of eyes on oh, the show, sure. right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm comfortable right now. Mm -hmm. Well, you're busy. Yeah. You have a lot going I on. Do. I um, do. You do a lot for people who have lost somebody. You're focusing on that. You know, yeah. we both have books talking about that, yeah. um, and that's kind of initially how we started talking you wrote about yeah. your son and yeah. I read your book and it reminded me very much of after, uh, of like when our daughter passed away yeah. you might talk about the uh, diseases she contacted or that you contacted and gave to her right well um, that is part of why I talk about Miss Cup in the book wanting a bath I don't get into it because it's a children's story but at the end um, in the appendix, I do talk about diseases that are transferred through saliva. You know, of course, there's the flu, there's hoof and mouth disease. I mean, there's a lot of, mm. ooh, I don't really want to give that to my child. Or, But what people don't realize is a lot of people share cups with their toddlers because the their toddler will take a swig and they don't feel like, oh, getting another yeah. cup. But yeah. the problem is if you're a woman in your childbearing years, um, toddlers often are sh shedding this virus called cytomegalovirus, or mm. CMV is the short name. Um, and CMV doesn't hurt them. It does, you don't even see symptoms. They don't look sick. But if you're pregnant and you catch it for the first time, it can pla pass the placenta and severely damage your unborn child that's in their that's development. Right. And that's what happened yeah. to my daughter, Elizabeth. Now, I never heard of it until... I talked to you. On which is crazy that you've, which is upsetting to me because yeah. everybody's heard don't change the cat box when you're pregnant. For some reason, people don't know, don't share dishes 
with your toddlers especially because they especially if they're in daycare a lot of them are shedding the virus because they're passing it back and forth because they're mouthing toys uh -huh. um, so anybody who has children or works with children just needs to be extra diligent don't pick up toys and then grab an apple and eat it if you pick up toys wash your hands then pick up an apple and eat it and if i if i remember correctly you were running a daycare i was i didn't know that that was, you know, yeah. putting me at extra risk. Like I said, I could have minimized the risk. Their studies oh, yeah. show that if you know about this virus, then you're just much more diligent. Yeah. Like I said, about picking up toys. And if your little cute toddler reaches up with their lips to kiss you on the mouth, you kind of miss and try to hit the cheek. Yeah. You know, just try to and avoid. Then watch it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you just try to avoid getting saliva in your mouth. Yeah. I mean, a little bit. They don't think that's a problem. But if it's a heavy viral load, I'm not a doctor, so I don't want to get into it. But yeah. they, so people don't have to be terrified about some little speck it's just but some people have certain habits because they don't realize some moms uh the toddler's pacifier falls on the ground i think oh i don't have any water i'll quick just clean it off uh -huh. of my mouth and then pop it back in their mouth well you've just got your toddler's saliva you know there's yeah. certain habits that women don't know they shouldn't do because they think, what could my child possibly have that could hurt me? Yeah, and they're um, not sick, so I'm not going to give it Right, and they're not, they don't look sick. And I didn't feel sick yeah. when I caught this virus, when I was pregnant with Elizabeth. And she was born severely disabled. And as you know, I just got a law passed in Connecticut. Yeah. It's the second state in the country to pass a law to help fight the disease. And um, I didn't get the prevention education part passed because that would have cost some money. Um, I did get, um, when a child fares the hearing test from now on in Connecticut, you have to test them for the disease. Because if they show positive, if that's why they lost their hearing, then they can avoid all those expensive genetic testings because now you know what caused that hearing loss. And there's also antivirals that a doctor may want to consider for that baby to help them prevent mm. the hearing loss from progressing. And it also helps with brain development because my daughter didn't just have a hearing loss. She had severe brain damage. She mm. was a severe case. A lot of children aren't as severe as she is, but they might show learning disabilities later in life. And nobody really knows why because a lot of times children come out looking okay. Um, mm. But that's why I think a lot of reason why it's largely unknown. And that's why you wrote the book... Uh Anything but a dog. Anything but a dog. Right. Uh, the perfect pet for a girl with congenital sedimentovirus. Yeah. That's a book about my daughter's life. Yeah. Uh, and I, I read that book. That was oh, you very, did. very. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Very You're very good. kind to read our work. <laughs> I read everybody's. <laughs> but I, I read that book, and I. You had to feel so bad because you could see what was developing and everything. Mm -hmm. But it's very well read. Thank and very you. Very well written. Thank you. I tried. And I didn't want to be depressing in it because she no. had a full life, a good yeah. life, as best as we could get her. So that's why I focused around her pets and her big sister to give the full life. Mm. But I do explain that I wish I had known uh, how to prevent this virus because <clears throat> studies do show that if women know they they reduce their chances of contracting it dramatically. Yeah. And like I said, you don't have to be crazy scared. <coughs> you just have to wash your hands more. <laughs> so, but thank you very much. Yeah, she did. I don't want her life to be in vain, you know, for yeah. what she went through. Um, and she passed away when she was 16. So she's not suffering anymore. But of course, yeah. I miss her. And one of the ways to yeah. relieve, I'll never not miss her. You know, I'll no, have that not. hole that, will never quite go away, yeah. but that's why I want to work hard at trying to prevent this from happening to other people. And because I like to write history and humor and fairy tales, I kind of mix that up. And that's why I wrote Once Upon a Placemat. It's a fun story. Mm. Kids aren't really realizing why the mm. cup wants to get a bath, but the parents who keep reading the, the back that's for parents will realize, yeah. oh, there really is a so good it's a reason. it's something for the parents, too. Right, so it's something for the whole family. Yeah. And even when I wrote Mystic Seafarer's Trail, I don't tell you to Chapter 7 why I'm trying to get thin and famous. Yeah. And, <laughs> the, whole, and the whole reason for trying to get thin and famous is then people listen to you. Yeah, I read that, too. <laughs> and I thought, this is Lisa. She can't even concentrate on a paragraph because <laughs> she pops all over the place. Which is the way you write, mm -hmm. and, and it's just, it was funny because I've read that and I just, you kept changing chapters and I think that was the one where you were supposed to go on a ship. Yeah, I got Shanghai to go on a <laughs> winter voyage. Yeah. 
<laughs> and that's when I had to lear start learning how coastal navigation and all those kinds of things. Because when I asked Jules, what happens if we get cast adrift and we have to start eating each other? Who gets eaten first? And she said the least useful. So I thought, oh boy. Oh, I'll stay home. <laughs> no, no, I'm going. But I better take coastal navigation and all that so that that's people right. <laughs> so they'll want to not eat me. <laughs> Lisa writes great books. And if you get a chance to see, see them, they're... Amazon? Yeah, Amazon. Bank Square Books carries a lot of my um, work, but Amazon covers everything. Yeah. You know, anything that I've written. E-books like, and everything. Yes. Yeah. And my Civil War book, Ever True. Um, Another good book. That was, thank you. That was published by Heritage Books. But yeah. again, I that is on Amazon, um, unless you and, go directly to the And we discussed that book on the show. Yes, we did. A couple years ago. So I continue to do uh, readings from those leather, letters, the Civil War letters, yeah. because it's kind of interesting that my great-grandmother at 17, she married at 15, and at 17, uh -huh. she's writing these letters to her husband, who's yeah. in the Union <laughs> Army, and then she went down to D.C. <laughs> so that's kind of fun that this 17-year-old uh, learned how to shoot the revs in case she had to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and it's neat, because those letters... Nobody made them up. Right. They were true drip blue and, and to the point. It's a lot of fun because they weren't educated. They didn't sit around philosophizing no. about anything. They just were telling you the stories. Who's sleeping with who? Who's getting <laughs> shot? Who's, you know, what Lincoln looks like? You yeah. know, looks about like any old farmer. Nothing, you know. So that's why I had to write a part for a narr narration in between so that people would know what's going on in mm -hmm. the war because they didn't really know no. what was going on beyond their little circle. So. Yeah. And they weren't well read, so they didn't. You know. Well, Joe Gillespie is, writes about the revolution, mm -hmm. and uh, she's interested in it. There's a lot of historical facts in it, and she just kind of weaves around them, mm -hmm. and uh, very interesting. But anyway, uh, I think I've read all your books. Really? I believe so. Shay's Rebellion. That's a really short one, so it would have been an easy okay, read. Okay, no, I haven't Hanging read that. Henry yeah. Kale. <laughs> you know, at least there's Guide for Writers. Um, no, I read that. Um, and that's because you don't need it because you like to write all the time anyway. Yeah. But this is kind of just to help you, <laughs> you want to write your own story. I give memory jogging questions and how to get published. Yeah. Um, tips on that. Um, ride a Horse on an Elevator is a children's novel. I don't think you'd read I, that. I did. Oh, did you read that yes. too? Wow. Yes. yes, I did. Wow. I am well read. You are well read. Well, I have to say, how many books do you read a, a month, would you say? Because you, you read Everybody's in Kappas? Yeah. Like, Everybody comes on my TV show. Uh-huh. And which is most of the people in Kappa. Right. So, yeah, I read, uh, matter of fact, I just got one the other day uh, from... Uh, Leslie Hammond, mm -hmm. who is going to be on my show next week, and I'm reading her book now and trying to get through that. Great. So, yes, I, I try to read probably two or three books a month. And, but, so that means you're reading not just fairy tales, you're reading oh, fiction, nonfiction. Yeah. Do you have any particular genre that you like the best? I like Patterson. I like his mysteries, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I like local history. Yes, I love local history. And, Beyond that, uh, I'll read anything. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's fun. I, I, matter of fact, I've got a collection of uh, local authors. I'm, it's one wall in the bedroom. <laughs> and I'm thinking, why am I got all these books? Right, I know. I have a lot of autograph yeah. books as well. Because yeah. a lot of times at these book signings where you have vendor tables, I just walk around, hey, do you want to trade a book? Because that way I can know what they're writing yes. about. They can yeah. know what I'm writing about. Yeah. And I think that really works. Wow, it's our five minutes already. <laughs> Ooh, should I tell you my upcoming events? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I do have some events coming up um, for anybody that would like to hear me. Friday, April 15th at 4.30 p.m., I'll be at the Niantic Community Church Children's Center, huh. and they are welcoming the general public. I'll be presenting to their children and families. Um, on Sun I'll be at Bank Square Books on Sunday, April 17th from 1 to 3 p.m., 
And I'll be bringing my placemats for kids to take home with them, and they could be coloring. And I also have coloring inside my book, yeah. as you know. I have images for yeah. coloring in there. And then I'll be at the Mystic and Noank Library doing a little uh, children's program. Again, that's free and open to the public. And after that one, I'll, they'll actually be serving a meal, and we'll be setting the table with the children. Oh, cool. <laughs> and having a snack. <laughs> oh, that's neat. So, uh, and that's Tuesday, April 26th at 1.15 p.m. And people can go to my uh, Facebook page and keep track of these events, which is... And that's up there right okay, now. Okay, Facebook, yes. Author Lisa Saunders is my Facebook. They can find me there to get those events and download play extra placemats for coloring, rewatch that video that we just saw. Mm -hmm. So, Well, that's cool. You're a busy lady anyway. <laughs> Every time I turn around, you're doing something else. What was the last year? Was it a beer thing? Or? Oh, I won the Stein hoisting yeah. contest. <laughs> <laughs> Again... <laughs> Uh, my quest to get thin and famous. It didn't make me thin, but it gave me <laughs> a short moment of fame <laughs> that I won the contest in Mystic. And so I went to uh, a no expense paid trip to, what's the name? Sam Adams Brewery oh, right, yeah. in um, Boston. I went yeah. to compete for the grand prize, which was a trip to Munich, but I didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> and that was hard to lift those steins for that long. <coughs> I didn't. I didn't do it this year because my bursitis is bothering me. <laughs> you. You're into a lot. You're busy. Well, I just enjoy yeah. these projects, you know, because yeah. as a freelancer, you can do that. I do write for clients. I'll write press releases for them to get, get their information out to the media. That's kind of what I do for clients. I write yeah. for newsletters, and then I write my own things, which you kind of, you know what I write a lot of yeah. memoir history kind yeah. of thing and plus my tv show it's fun it's a lot of fun to yeah and you get a newsletter once a month yeah mm -hmm. and that's interesting thank you and thank uh you. it's she's hard to follow because she <laughs> you're everywhere <laughs> i know i need to what you need to come up with is like a one tagline for me because it's good if authors kind of stick to one genre yeah. i think it's just easier to market to one segment so maybe if you could help me someday yeah. come up with one thing <laughs> I, I think, I think it's better to be versatile. You think so? Yeah. Because then you have because so then nobody, many audiences. Nobody, they're not expecting anything from you. <laughs> you know, they go, "What's she gonna write on next?" <laughs> <laughs> if anyone uh, cares, I don't know. Yeah, like mine, all about death, and then the other one, all about the history. <laughs> I mean, you, well, I like you death and history too. Yeah. You know, like we, we we share that. You know, <laughs> like but I said, you change it quickly. Writing the uh, modern images for Mystic, yes, it's an image-driven book, but it's hardcore facts about the living, and the living are difficult to write about because then they complain. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and you better do it right. Yep. All right, we've got two minutes left, and tomorrow is Good Friday, which uh, for Catholics is the uh, last Friday before. Uh, Easter, and I hope everybody enjoys Easter. The uh, Pawkatuck VFW has got an Easter dinner, ham and whatever. Uh, and they'll also have, tomorrow night will be the Pawkatuck VFW's last Friday of uh, fish and chips. They'll open at noon time. It will offer senior discounts from noon until 5. Takeouts can be called in at any time, 860-599-2404. Uh, in April, we will be getting to serve fish and chips once a month on the uh, second Friday of each month. So come on down. They, uh, for the past shows on YouTube, please go to sec-tv.org and you can press the button that says YouTube and you can see all the past shows, Lisa's, mine, and uh, there's a ton of them on there all the way back to January, I think. And uh, so you're never bored. You never have. You always have something to watch. Watch. Uh, next week I'll be talking to Leslie Hammond, who is also a local author. <clears throat> On March 28th, I start my first session for loved ones lost. Uh, if you've lost someone, if you know somebody who has lost someone, if you'd like to discuss the loss, or, or just come to listen to other people talk about it. We're going to have some suggestions. I can't tell you these are recommendations because what works for one person doesn't work for another. But it, come down to Groton Regency at uh, 6.30 on Monday night, the 21st, 28th, and uh, let's see what it sounds like. I think you'll enjoy it, and I hope you can come. I, I'm planning on it. Good. 
I'd like to have other people know that I know. <laughs> Email me at uh, santostom at comcast.net uh, or call at 860-599-5067. Thank you. Winter is gone. The nights are warmer. But it's still a great idea to cuddle up with a good book. You should be reading. See you next week. Thank you for watching. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me, Tom. Whew.